Now, like many photographers, I'm an introvert. I prefer to the one behind the camera rather than the one standing in front of it. And whilst not all photographers are like this, it's easy to see why people who don't like to be the centre of attention are drawn to photography. Because of course, the focus is always going to be what's in front of the camera, not what's behind it. So the idea of doing a self-portrait can seem like the last thing you want to do. However, not only can it help you become a better photographer, it can also improve your confidence as well. So if you're someone who's never had the motivation or desire to do self-portraits, then this is the video for you. Now in this day of social media, there are more pictures of us than ever out there in the world for everyone to see. And even if you're someone who doesn't like getting their picture taken, it's hard to go to any sort of social event with people there to not have someone snapping away pictures on their phone, which you may end up getting tagged in later on in social media whether you like them or not. And of course, unless you're a supremely confident person, we all have some things about ourselves we don't like. For me, I have this thing in my nose I can't help spotting photographs and sometimes all you see in my eyes, one eye looks a bit more closed than another. And I actually feel really lucky that when I was a teenager there wasn't social media around because I just kind of missed that point because I was self-conscious enough as it was then rather than having the worry of a picture of myself I didn't like ending up on the internet for the whole school to see. Now whilst I have done the odd picture of myself for say like my LinkedIn or my website, I've never really sat down and actually properly done self-portrait photography. And one of the reasons for that is I never really felt comfortable sort of almost like directing myself so to speak. So if I'm doing a picture for example of someone else as a portrait then I'm able to look through the viewfinder at the time and sort of make the subtle changes and tweaks in maybe my composition and angle or tell them to maybe move in a certain way that's going to get the best shot. But because I wasn't able to look through the viewfinder while doing photographs of myself and just have it set up in the tripod like it is just now then I always kind of find it harder to direct myself. And coupled with my introverted nature, self-portrait photography had never really appealed to me. I've always thought that one day it'd be really good to try even just as an experiment. And after getting in front of the camera for this YouTube channel, I felt more ready than ever to make that leap. Now one of the inspirations of this video has been Sean Tucker who talks a lot about self-portraits and he's one of my favourite YouTubers slash photographers. And if you haven't heard of this channel, I'll put a link to it in the description below. Not only just for this video, but even for this channel in itself, one thing he does is he talks a lot about the kind of deeper meaning behind photography rather than just the sort of technical aspects of how to work a camera. And that's something I always want to do with this channel and I've started doing with my discussions and videos on creativity. However, I never knew if there was an audience out there for it, but seeing his channel really showed me that there is actually an appetite out there somewhat for that type of content. Now the video that Sean Tucker did recently was more on the healing power of self-portraits and if you watch this channel regularly you know that he's going through some sort of personal issues at the moment that I won't go into in detail here. The point is, is I'm not in a similar situation and for me doing self-portrait photography was just more of an experiment. I wanted to see how it would change my confidence and my perspective of doing that type of photography. Now since this wasn't exactly my forte, there was a few things I did when planning this out. The first thing is, is I made sure to keep things nice and simple. I shot indoors and I used a combination of both natural light and the soft light I have as well. I wasn't going to go outside where the weather and lighting could potentially change just like that and create a bit more challenges for myself. In addition, I wasn't going to add in any sort of props or things like that. For example, I wasn't going to stand there with a lens up to my face or as common in portrait photography to try and tell some sort of story of who that person is. I wasn't going to try and do the same thing with myself because I felt that's maybe just again complicating things a bit too much for my first attempt. Now whilst I never went overboard, I did make some effort to make myself look good. By that what I mean is that I did my hair, brushed my teeth, ironed my clothes, just sort of on par as I would if I was going out to meet friends for coffee. I didn't see the point in sort of shooting myself first thing in the morning when I haven't even had a shower yet because I thought I was just going to set myself up to not like the photographs it produced. Most importantly, I didn't shoot these photographs with the idea of using them for any specific purpose. For example, using them for my YouTube channel, or Instagram or LinkedIn or anything like that. I might end up doing that, but I never went in with that idea in my head because I thought, again, that was just going to distract me because I'll get this idea that certain sort of pictures for different social media need to look a certain way. What I wanted to do was just set up the camera, start shooting away and keep it as raw as possible and just as natural as possible, try and different sort of poses and looks just to see what the outcome would be. One of the first things I realised is that shooting self-portraits are a lot like pancakes. The first few are always a bit dodgy. You need to give yourself time to relax and one of the best ways I found to do that was that I had my camera set up on the tripod, I had my remote shutter control in my hand and I snap away say maybe 5 to 10 photographs. I then sort of review them, see what looked uh, best and then sort of go from there and shoot another 5 to 10 and repeat. I found that it took me a while to end up relaxing the front of the camera but the more I relaxed the more the results ended up improving. 
in the end, everyone's got a good side and it can take you a bit of time to find out what that side might be. For me, I actually found that some of the best photographs and I ended up just sort of fidgeting myself, sort of moving my hair around, things like that, and I ended up producing some of the most interesting results. Black and white edits I found to be your friend when editing self-portraits. The reason for this is, of course, that it can take away any sort of, the sort of paleness in your skin and some blemishes are not as noticeable when you put a black and white filter on it. However, I was also careful not to over-process the photographs as well. For me, I didn't see the point in ending up what you might normally do in portrait photography is maybe like sharpen up the eyes and take away the odd blemish. I wasn't going to do anything like that. For me, what I did was that I did sort of two different edits. I did a sort of just a soft colour one, which is very sort of lightly touched up in just terms of the exposure, the lens correction in Photoshop. And then I did a sort of black and white filter that actually had a bit of punch and actually shows a lot of detail. Now, I quite like the outcome of that. Of course, that might not be for everyone. The point is, if you are doing it for yourself, what I just say is, again, keep it simple. Do a couple of different edits, but don't do any more than that. And don't go into sort of crazy in-depth and sort of taking hours and hours editing little tiny little details in the photograph itself. Do a couple of different versions, no more than that, and see which one you like most. Another thing I realised is that I actually enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I would. And like I said at the beginning of this video, I'm not someone that's eager to get in front of the camera or likes attention on myself. But I actually found that the more I did it, the more I enjoyed it. Not just I end up relaxing, but I end up actually quite liking the idea of trying out stupid things. And that's what led me to doing sort of silly things of sort of laughing, holding my hand over my eye, things like that. And even if some of them looked a bit stupid and a bit daft, then, well, who cares? You know, I was willing to just give it a go and I got to that point of being that comfortable just to try just about anything and of course if you do this for yourself I would honestly recommend doing the same thing because of course at the end of the day you don't need to share these in social media if they just end up going into your delete folder then that's fair enough you know you might just end up getting some good pictures along the way because you tried some silly ones before that you will gain confidence in trying it out because I find myself now more comfortable than ever in getting in front of the camera. And one of the things I realised is that in the past when I've done sort of portraits of other people, I put in a lot of effort to try and make sure I get the best light and the best angles to make them get the best results of themselves. However, I never put in the same amount of effort for myself and this is probably the reason why I never really enjoyed doing the self-portrait photography and why I never really enjoyed the results I had in the past. So not only is it something that I've just done as a one-off experiment, but it's actually something that I enjoyed so much I'll end up doing it again. And because my confidence is now up, probably next time I'll try to be a bit more creative, maybe try a bit more sort of props and maybe try and a bit, tell a bit more of a story than I had done this time. And there's a good chance that if you put in the same amount of effort to your own self-portraits, then you'll feel the same way and you'll want to do it again at some point. Now, there's a film that came out several years ago called We Bought a Zoo with Matt Damon. Now, it's not some sort of masterpiece, but it does have one of my all-time favourite movie quotes in it. In the film, Matt Damon's character was talking about how he met his wife, and the first time he saw her, he saw her through the window of a coffee shop just sitting there on her own. And of course, he wanted to go up and speak to her, but he felt really embarrassed and scared to think he might go up there, not know what to say, and make a fool of himself. And what he says is that sometimes all it takes is 20 seconds of courage, 20 seconds of embarrassing bravery and I promise you something great can come of it. And the point is, is that's what he showed and he ended up meeting this woman that's going to become his wife. Now of course the point is here is that sometimes when we do things, it's that first step that can seem most daunting. But if you can just push through that, if you can just show that 20 seconds of courage, then suddenly once you get going the rest of it doesn't seem so bad. And what I realised when doing self-portraits is I'd never properly taken that first step when it came to photographing myself. I'd always sort of rushed through and just did enough to get the pictures for whatever purpose I wanted to use those photographs for, rather than taking my time over it. I'd never shown that 20 seconds of bravery, so to speak, to really sit there, plan out and take it seriously, and then do some sort of silly poses, even if it just felt stupid at the time, just so my photographs would develop, so it got to a point there were some good results there. In the end, photography isn't just about sharing every photograph you take for the world to see. However, I think it's important to try this type of photography at least for yourself to see. I spoke about in a previous video that one of the best ways you increase your confidence as a photographer is just to put some of your best work on the wall, even if no one else sees it but you. Now, we can't always look our best in every single shot, but if you can just be happy with some results, then that's better than none. And I promise you that if you put the same effort into doing self-portrait photography as say you have for photographing other people, then you will end up with some results that you're happy with. Give this a go for yourself and let me know how you get on in the comment section below. And you, of course, you don't have to share any results on social media for people to see, but if you're out for that, then happily tag me or DM me on Instagram. I'd love for this video even to encourage just one person to try self-portrait photography for themselves because after doing it, I really wish I'd tried it sooner. 
And of course, if you did enjoy this video, please do hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one.